This next section will cover some advanced runtime options. First, let's do a quick review of Java Virtual Machines. Once again, a single JVM runs on a single machine, so an Atom only has one JVM to handle the workload associated with that Atom. A molecule has a single JVM per node on the cluster by default. So a molecule can be configured with forked execution, in which case there can be multiple JVMs per node, which is similar to a cloud, and we'll dive into the details of that shortly. These additional JVMs are transient. They are spun up on execution requests and return to memory when the execution finishes. The node JVM, on the other hand, always persists to keep that node running. A node JVM could also function as a Web Services Server, or WSS. This is how you make Boomi a RESTful web service or SOAP service to your customer or company. So instead of sending requests to consume the service, like we've seen in previous exercises, you are the service and Boomi receives the requests. It can also serve as a JMS, which is a Java messaging service, a queue for storing and retrieving messages. Finally, the Atom Cloud is the most dynamic of the three. It always has multiple JVMs and will scale dynamically to meet the need. It spins up a JVM for each process request. This may help illustrate the architecture. An Atom has a single JVM. In the middle, the molecule has a head node and can have multiple child nodes as well. The Atom Cloud has a head node, a specific JVM for handling Atom queuing, and we could also have included a JVM that handles real-time executions called an Atom Worker as well. There are JVMs for each execution running simultaneously on the cloud. The Atom Cloud will always have multiple JVMs per node because a property called forked execution is on by default. This is because the Atom Cloud is a multi-tenant environment and necessitates forked execution to provide process isolation. We'll see shortly that there is user control over turning on forked executions in a molecule. By default, this is set to off. Let's take a look at threaded executions. A thread is an executing code path within a JVM. Your JVM is doing many jobs at one time. It's executing the process, communicating with the platform, and maintaining health. All of these jobs are handled on different threads. All of the threads are sharing the same heap space. Remember that allocated memory by default is 512 megabytes. If your process is moving a lot of documents and data, it is important to know how your heap space is being used. So a single atom runs different processes as separate threads in the same JVM. A molecule also uses threads per execution by default, but not if forked executions is turned on. You can use the flow control shape in your process to allow it to execute across multiple threads. This is how we can enable some parallel processing within our processes. But those parallel threads are again utilizing the same heap space. This is in contrast to how forked executions work, which we'll take a look at in a few slides. This is a screenshot of the flow control shape. You can see the number of units is set to two and the unit scope is set to threads. So we'll run them as batches of five documents each. So in this example, here is our flow control at work. Our flow control has been set to a document batch of five and the unit scope is set to threads. In this example, our start shape is going to receive nine documents because of our five document batch setting, the flow control creates two groups and creates a different thread for each group. They flow concurrently through the process and are sent to Salesforce at roughly the same time. Now let's take a look at forked executions. Forked execution is an option on a molecule, but it is the default behavior in a cloud. Now what this does is for every process that executes, the node will fork off a separate JVM that has its own heap space dedicated to that JVM. So remember, each JVM heap space is carved out of memory from the total machine resources. So with forked execution, you can use more of your machine resources when needed and not have to have it always allocated. 
but be mindful to set a maximum forks and be aware of how much memory you have available. This is good for scheduled or batch or large data volumes because it allows you to insulate entire runtimes against its own JVM and heap space. Forked execution is not recommended for web services or other real-time listeners because of startup latency, which can quickly consume your system memory. With forked executions turned on, the main node will spin up a new forked JVM for each execution. The main node will always exist because it must maintain status and communication to the other nodes in the cluster. So in this example, the main node spins up two forked JVMs for process execution. Now when the process executions are completed, the forked JVMs terminate and return the heap back to the machine resources. Now in this example, the flow control shape is set up a little bit differently because the unit scope is now set to processes and not to threads. In this example, we're using flow control shape with five document batch count again, but this time the unit scope again is set to processes. So once again, we see the nine documents flowing in. This time the flow control creates two groups and creates a JVM for each group. They get sent to Salesforce from different machines. So you can see that flow control allows you concurrent processing either by thread or by JVM. Multiple threads will make use of the same heap space while multiple JVMs will make use of their own heap space. Just remember that with multiple JVMs, you must be aware of how many you are trying to create in comparison to how much RAM your system has. We've mentioned flow control several times. Let's take a closer look at it. In a molecule scenario, the flow control shape provides the ability to implement multi-threads or multi-JVMs during the process build or design time. The fork JVM is created on demand as the process executes. Unit scope is a field within the flow control shape that you set at build or design time. And when the runtime cannot accommodate a forked execution, it will default back to using threads. So if you use flow control on an atom, the scope will fall back to threaded because forked execution is not available on an atom. On a molecule, you can set and use the scope at processes as long as you haven't reached the forked maximum and then the process would fall back to threads. The benefit of the flow control shape is pretty obvious. It's that it speeds up data processing by dividing and conquering and also has no impact on licensing. The caution of flow control is that some processes, especially reading and writing from a document cache or to disk, can significantly slow down a process as each of the threads or JVMs are accessing the same disk space. A scenario where flow control is really useful is in large data loads, where it is best to split up the load across multiple JVMs or multiple threads if you have the heap space available. It's good practice to use the flow control shape to take advantage of the capabilities of your runtime. So long as you have the available memory, why not put it to use? In the flow control shape, you can group the documents, create a number of units, assign document groups to each unit, and distribute unit to nodes. Here's a particular scenario to demonstrate some order of operation when using both parallel processing and run individually at the same time. So if you enable parallel processing and also run individually in the flow control shape, the parallel processing is applied first before the run individually. So if you have two threads chosen and 20 documents, then the 20 documents will be split into two batches of 10, and within each thread, the 10 documents will be run individually. Now to take this to the next level and to achieve your desired mechanics, you can use a series of flow control steps to first split into process JVMs and then again into threads per JVM. The table on this slide continues on to the next slide as well, but it shows us the many different parallel processing options. This table shows the flow control unit scope set to threads. Rows number one and two are a local atom and cannot have forked execution, so it defaults to multiple threads on a single JVM. Rows number three and four are a molecule, so with forked 
executions enabled, the specified number of threads are created within the existing forked execution JVM on the original node. So that's detailing the example we showed in the previous slide. In this table, the flow control unit scope is set to process. Row one is a local atom and cannot have forked execution, so it defaults to multiple threads on a single JVM rather than multiple JVMs. Row number two is if a molecule at the time only has one running JVM, maybe the other JVM machines are down, it will create a new forked execution JVM if possible. Row three is a molecule with forked executions turned off, so it will split the execution across the existing node JVMs and use threads if needed. And row number four is a default behavior of a cloud and the optional behavior for a molecule when the molecule has forked executions enabled. So here the forked JVMs will spin up across all the nodes according to calculated load.